Now in this video, we're going to look at adding uh, trend lines to our scatter plot. So we're going to create our scatter plot um, using the scatter plot option rather than the graph builder option this time. Now you have, when you open up the scatter plot option, it gives you a dialog box with several options. So the um, in the example that we did in the previous video, we had a simple scatter plot and then we added group variables to them. But now we're going to look at regression. Now, if you do regression with groups, then what it will do is it will do the same re regression, but it will add different regression options for each of the groupings. So you'll get, if you have three groups, you'll get three regression equation, regression lines on your graph. Um, you can also do trends uh, connecting with the lines. So like if you're doing a line graph, and again, you can do this within groups. Uh, if you have a lot of data that's not sequential, then I would avoid um, these connect with lines options because this isn't a line graph. This isn't uh, sequentially collected data. So what we're going to do for this particular example is we're going to go into the simple regression. We're going to do one regression for the whole data set. And so I'm going to select that and hit OK. Now, again, it has only given me my um, uh, numerical data. It has ignored the type because we're doing numerical analysis. Um, we can do um, proline or we can do color intensity or we can pick one of these other ones. Um, I think I'm going to do color intensity so that it's consistent with our previous graph. Um, you can go into labels and you can select um, color intensity uh, to add a title to your graph. Um, you don't have to work, mess around with a lot of these, um, but feel free to poke around and experiment with what they're going to give you. Um, now in the, um, the data view, you can choose a couple of different options for uh, how the data is going to be displayed. Now for regression, don't change the data display one, but here on the regression option, you can do none if you just want a basic scatter plot. You can do a linear regression that goes straight through. You can do a quadratic regression. Again, this will be some kind of a curve potentially, uh, and then a cubic regression. Now, if uh, generally speaking, you see a lot of curvature in your data, then quadratic or cubic regression would be appropriate. But if you based on our previous graph, we didn't see a lot of waviness in our data. It was mostly linear. So I'm going to choose the linear option here. Now on the smoother tab, um, you can also have none here, or this lowest option is essentially a weighted regression. So what it can do is if you have, again, very uh, uh, sort of um, data where the, the trend changes frequently, if it, the trend is very complex, then you can use the lowest regression uh, to show what that sort of trend might look like if you only took pieces of the data and selected among it. And I don't mean by type, but just numerical pieces of data. Um, now I'm going to leave this one off for now, but we can come back and we can make a second graph that shows the lowest only. So none so what we're doing is we're doing a linear regression with no, no smoother. And then when you're ready to graph, hit OK. And so this one, again, it plotted a straight line going through the middle of the data. And that is what you would expect from a linear regression line. Again, a quadratic regression line um, would put try to put some kind of curve on this. And a cubic would try to put a slightly even more complex curve on it. Now you can experiment with these curves and see if, in fact, uh, it's appropriate if it if the fit is better using the curve. But um, I picked this variable because it had the best correlation between alcohol and any of the other variables. And so correlation is a linear measure of the relationship. And so a linear uh, line actually doesn't do too bad a job. All right, now to the lowest one, uh, we can go back and we can create another graph. Again, I'm gonna pick it um, with regression 
And under the, I'm going to leave all the labels and everything the same from before, all the data the same, but under regression, I'm going to put none and I'm going to switch to a lowest smoother. Now I'm going to do this with the uh, default values that they have uh, set previously in mini tab. But again, um, the changing these values will change the appearance of the smoother function. And so feel free to experiment with it to get what looks like a better fit with your data. And we're just going to hit OK to see what this looks like. So in this, again, in this particular case, the lowest smoother, what it's going is taking chunks of the data and it is putting a, a curve on the data in that sort of small section. And then it's adding another, taking another section of the graph and putting another curve on it and so on and so forth. And you can see that this graph does look, um, the smoothing function does actually look like it's kind of curvy and nonlinear. This will be a sort of try to really fit into the middle of the data because it's not using all of the data at the same time, just using pieces of it. And so sometimes this will give you a hint about, do I, maybe I should use a cubic regression on this particular graph. Uh, as opposed to the linear function that we started with. So sometimes this can also be really ha handy just to see how the trend is. Um, this also, as I, I should mention, is useful when you have can, um, sequentially collected data. Instead of having a straight line or just connecting the dots to each other, this smoothing function can kind of work like... Um, like a moving average type of function. And uh, that can give you some, some sense of what the trend is doing with some of the noise sort of taken out of there. 